Chapter 10. Wireless LAN Network Security. In this chapter you will learn about the following. 802.11 Security Basics. When you are securing a wireless 802.11 network, five major components are typically required. First, data privacy and integrity. Second, authentication, authorization, and accounting, AAA. Third, segmentation. Fourth, monitoring. And fifth, policy. Data privacy and integrity. 802.11 wireless networks operate in license-free frequency bands, and all data transmissions travel in the open air. Protecting data privacy in a wired network is much easier because physical access to the wired medium is more restricted, whereas access to wireless transmissions is available to anyone in listening range. Therefore, using cipher encryption technologies to obscure information is mandatory to provide proper data privacy. Cypher is an algorithm used to perform encryption. The two most common algorithms used to protect data are the RC4 algorithm and the Advanced Encryption Standard A. ES algorithm. Authentication, authorization, and accounting or AAA is a key computer security concept that defines the protection of network resources. Authentication is the verification of identity and credentials. Authorization determines if the device or user is authorized to have access to network resources. Accounting is tracking the use of network resources by users and devices. Segmentation is the chosen method of separating user traffic within a network where it can be achieved through a variety of means including firewalls, routers, virtual private network and virtual local area networks. The most common wireless segmentation strategy used in 802.11 Enterprise Wireless LAN is segmentation using VLANs. Monitoring and Policy A full-time monitoring solution is also needed to protect against possible attacks that target the wireless LAN. Policy defines how computer systems must be implemented. Legacy 802.11 Security Open System Authentication provides authentication without performing any type of user verification. It is essentially a two-way exchange between the client radio and the access point. Shared Key Authentication was a four-way authentication frame handshake. Static WEP Encryption Wired Equivalent Privacy or WEP is a Layer 2 encryption method that uses the RC4 streaming cipher. The original 802.11 standard initially only defined 64, Big WEP is a supported encryption method. Shortly thereafter, 128, Big WEP was also defined as a supported encryption process. MAC Filters Every 802.11 radio has a unique MAC address. Most vendors provide MAC filtering capabilities on their access points. MAC filters can be configured to either allow or deny traffic from specific client MAC addresses to associate and connect to an access point. SSID cloaking or hiding. Access points typically have a setting called closed network or broadcast SSID. By either enabling a closed network or disabling the broadcast SSID feature, you can hide or cloak your wireless network name. The idea behind cloaking the SSID is that any client station that does not know the SSID of the wireless LAN will not be able to discover the wireless LAN and therefore will not associate. Robust Security versus Legacy Security after 802.11i was ratified, the Wi-Fi Alliance introduced the WPA2 certification. It supports both CCMP slash AES and TKIP slash RC4 dynamic encryption key generation. 802.1x slash EAP authentication is more complex and meant for the enterprise. Whereas passphrase authentication is simpler and meant for a SOHO environment. Any 802.11 radios manufactured after 2005 are most likely WPA2 compliant. RSN is a network that allows for the creation of only robust security network associations. Pre-shared key. 
or PSK authentication is meant to be used in SOHO environments. WPA or WPA2 personal utilizes PSK authentication. Proprietary PSK consists of dynamic and private PSK. 802.1x slash EAP. WPA slash WPA2 Enterprise refers to the 802.1x slash EAP authentication solution. The framework consists of three main components which are supplicant, authenticator and authentication server. Based from the figure, you can see the different standalone AP and wireless line controller environment by using 802.1x slash EAP framework. 4.2 Multip and Wireless LAN Bridging A root bridge would be the authenticator and a non-root bridge would be the supplicant. Traffic Segmentation Segmentation can be achieved through a variety of means, including firewalls, routers, virtual private network and virtual local area networks. Virtual local area networks are used to create separate broadcast domains in a Layer 2 network and are often used to restrict access to network resources without regard to physical topology of the network. A common strategy is to create a guest, voice, and employee SSID slash VLAN pair as shown in figure. Role-based access control is another approach to restricting system access to authorized users. Many of the wireless LAN vendors provide RBAC capabilities. The three main components of an RBAC approach are users, roles, and permissions. Infrastructure security. Protecting hardware. And interfaces should never be ignored in an 802.11 enterprise. In addition to protecting Wi-Fi hardware from theft, you must secure the management interfaces. So, that only authorized administrators have access. VPN wireless security. VPNs were often used for WLAN security because the VPN solution was already in place inside the wired infrastructure. The two major types of VPN topologies are router to router or client server based. Use of VPN technology is mandatory for remote access. Your end users will take their laptops off site and will most likely use public access Wi Fi hotspots. Because there is no security of most hotspots, a VPN solution is needed. The VPN user will need to bring the security to the hotspot in order to provide a secure, encrypted connection. It is imperative that users implement a VPN solution coupled with a personal firewall whenever accessing any public access Wi-Fi networks. You can see the difference here the implementation of the VPN wireless security for hotspot and the implementation of VPN wireless security for site to site. Guest wireless LAN security. Most businesses like to provide Wi-Fi guest access as a convenience to visitors. Guest wireless networks allow internet access to visitors, such as contractors, students, or salespeople. Many organizations understand the need for their visitors to be able to access the internet, especially to access email. Therefore, many organizations provide wireless LAN guest access with a unique SSID and guest VLAN. The security components of a guest wireless LAN normally consist of the following. Guest SSID, guest VLAN, firewall policy, captive web portal and guest management solution. Captive Portal Most hotspots and guest networks are secured by a captive portal. A captive portal is essentially the integration of a firewall with an authentication web page. Authenticating to a captive portal typically requires the user to enter a username and password. This username and password are verified against a radius database password. Chapter 10 Summary End of chapter. Thank you for watching and listening.